Hi folks, Black Country History Hunter. We're heading to the Himley Pit number five. This is part two. Roll the credits. Roll the credits. We're walking down to pit number five today. This is part two. Uh, the reason I'm going back down is because I still want to find the pits. Bert is with me to say, say hello Bert. How do people? How do. Um, yeah, so if you look at this image here, you can see why we're really interested. Last time I came, I missed these. We didn't find these. You see the black circle? And uh, this time, we're going to orientate the map. We're going to look at the LiDAR. We're going to work it out, guys. We'll work it out with you, and we're going to find it. So, yeah, thumbs up. Let's have a look, see if we can't find the pits today. Right, guys, we're just walking towards the pit now. Where we are now is on the quarry, and that was pit number four. Pit number four, obviously was owned by somebody else in the end it was dug out it became a quarry tragedy happened where that young man or a few young men have died in this quarry the quarry then got filled in with rubbish and we are where we are now with this huge lump of junk which is being degassed slowly over time and burnt off over there somewhere yep so this will be housed in one day but uh, as for now we're heading for pit four which is over there in the in the woods and uh let's see if we can find these pit heads yeah Right folks, so most most mines I've looked at, I've never understood why some have circular features on them, which is like a sump or an area for water to go and some don't. But I'm starting to see why this one has and why it goes in. If you look here, they're having problems with water. So when this pit number five went in, the Earl of Dudley, the mine master, whoever it was, decided the coal was worth getting at, had to deal with this water. So one of the ways they'd have done it was to stop the water from going back into the pit was to dig a hole next to the pit to pump the water into and that's the big feature we see on the map here but yeah there you go so still to this day we're struggling with the water that's in the area so um but the coal was worth it so they they pumped it and they got it out yeah. you all right bird <laughs> fell down the hill then folks bloody hell <laughs> oh. Found pit number five again, and over here is the sump. Now, the sump was a place where the water was put because this is quite a low marshy area, so the coal mine would have been full of water and uh, it's quite impressive now what we're going to do now we're going to pull up the maps and we're going to look at exactly where we are and, and get our bearings so we can find the pit heads off that so if you look at the screen now you'll see that we are here next to this sump and the Gornal road is here and if we orientate ourselves off this then it seems to me that the pits are over in that direction so we're going to walk that way and I mean, if you just look around us, there's so much stuff in the ground, guys, that it's everywhere, coal everywhere, there's history here. Yeah, man, look at this, guys, but I mean, look what we got. So this is where the building was, so you can see the building on the map here, and uh, you can see it's all bricks now. So really, to our right, there should be the pits. Come on, Bert. Let's go. You get excited now, it looks like the badgers have been here. Hold on. Okay, now we're climbing up like what seems like a pit bank, guys. I don't want to alarm you. But this looks like what we're looking for on the LiDAR. We've got a bank. I don't think this is, these are badger pits that have jumped in, I think. So that's a badger pit and it's just collapsed in. But it could be that the, you can see, look. Look what the badger's digging up, folks. That's just black coal dust. That's just the stuff that you'd get when you're looking for coal. That's just the crap I you always say, look around badger so around under trees just in case. Yeah, definitely, Bert. Definitely, right. Just keep your eyes peeled now. Obviously, watch your footing. There's another big mound there. Look, that's that's come out of some big hole. So there's some sort of digging here. But it's holding that bloody big. Oh, 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 o
looks like at some point there's been a fence around it, but it's obviously broken and rocked over the years. But, uh, Shut up, all mate. Oh, no. That cheeto look very gay. I'll do this for the uh, channel. Okay, guys. So as you can see, we've got. Try not to sting my bum. We've got a pit here, folks. So this was basically 1870s, 1860s, maybe earlier. I've got reference to this in the 70s. A young man called George Hale. He was 20, sorry, yeah, 17 years old, and on the 21st of December, 1873, I think, I'll put the article up for you now, he was at work, guys, imagine, a cold winter's day before Christmas. So he's looking forward to Christmas, I don't know if he was working Christmas, I don't know, but this young man, as you can see in the article, fell over on the pit bank, he worked on the pit bank, so a cold day in this spot, where we are today, he's tripped. He fell between two tubs. Tubs are what they carried the coal and the slag in. For some reason, one of the tubs was moving and he was crushed. Crushed his mid waist, his legs, and his feet were badly damaged, mangled. They said he might not, he wouldn't survive. The odds of him surviving were very phenomenal. They days. took him back to his house in Lower Gornal, where subsequently I imagine he died. I've not found anything else on him, folks. If anybody knows, I'd, I'd love to know. George Hale. The article is here, as you've seen. And he worked here, folks. You know? Pit number five. Look at that. I'll put a picture up now of what, what you would see at the top of a pit like this. So there would be a big wheel house above us and that would carry a rope with a, a bucket. You can see the bucket and the rope in this picture here. And uh, this would be lifted up and down by a winding house. So there'd be a house with an engine in or a gin, which would have been horse driven. I've shown gins before, but here's a picture of a gin just in case you're not familiar. So the horse would walk around and that motion would be turned into a circular motion which would then lift up the bucket up and down. But yeah, this would have been made, these bricks were laid by coal miners or, or mine sinkers. It's an amazing thing. A thousand men a year died in these mines in the 1870s. Still, there was an act in 1860 that said that children of the age of 12 could start work, but before that you could start work in the coal mine at 10. You know. These were then protected. The fencing would have come in 1998 when the, uh, the coal authority was put into uh, an organisation and that was basically to protect anybody that had damage from coals or to stop so they capped coal mines because there was a lot of people dying still from coal mines, falling down, falling over. So they come up with this authority that could then cap them. So no doubt the coal authority has done this fencing. But uh, this has been long forgot folks. Right, let's try and get back round and see if we can find the other one. Oh. Now we're right on the end of the pit bank now, and you can see here this mo this kind of sedimentary rock that's come up. Don't forget, a few million years ago, this place was a, a, a shallow seabed. So in this here, what the badgers have kind of dug up for us, or dug up for us, should I say? There's all kinds of marl, which is like a thin sedimentary rock. And it breaks open quite easily. You get nodules in this and you can find fossils in it. But this has clearly been dug out when they've been digging the mine, been put soft rubbish here in the pit and then it's been dug up again. So this could have been the original spoil from the original pit. And the badgers have found a nice home in it because it's easy to dig and probably quite nice in the winter. Come on, guy. Come on, Bert. Come on, Bert. Let's have a look, see what we've got here. Oh, look at this, guy. So when they're digging the pit, 1860s, something like that, They've had to dig through this shallow seabed and in doing so they've had to sh go through the big slabs of slate, it, you'd call it slate but it's it's like a, a sedimentary rock. You can imagine the process is little shells and animals die and the fluff and the detritus land on the seabed and over years it's like flour, builds up and builds up and builds up and it leaves this and uh, you can actually see on this one it looks like a fossil. So yeah, millions of years old folks. You know, is it Cretaceous period? I don't know. Very, very early, millions and millions of years ago. I wonder if the coal miners, these hard, tough Victorian men, knew what this was. Probably not. Come on. What's that hold there, Bert? Right, here we are. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. There's ah. the second pit, folks. That's fenced off as well. Fenced off, but this one's more, more Nobody protected. This one. Nobody's been here, have they? Right, come on. Let's have a look round here, Bert. That Follow me. Work. Kill me with the brickwork, our quality the watch. I oh, know mate, it's amazing. Eh? No, Especially no. in the middle and nowhere as well, you know what I mean? Well, 
There's they always found a way. In there. Sometimes yep. when they decommission mines, the bricks would be taken out before they filled it because bricks are bricks were valuable. Oh, obviously. Oh, look at this, man. Look at this bird. This one does seem as big, but maybe that's an illusion. Look at that. You see the trees. Yeah, I know what you mean. Oh, it, it does look so big. Look at that oh. big piece of iron there. Is that is that some sort of uh, some rim or something? Maybe have to do with the capping. I don't know. Might be. Or, or, or does he look like a rail? We've got the. Um, I don't know. No, we've hard. got the camera now, haven't we? But we've got the um, endoscope. So we're going to start looking down things like this. Maybe so guys, keep, 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 keep watching, folks. Because look at that, man. That's amazing. This is part two of the number five pit video. If you've missed the first one, I suggest you catch up. Part three is coming soon, and that's why we found it, guys. We're getting the harnesses soon. We're not going to do anything too dangerous, don't worry, folks. We know what we're doing. Ex Army, I've done all my danger training. I've dealt with explosions, grenades, bullets, things like that. So I do know what's safe and what's not safe. So we're going to be tying ourselves off from that massive tree over there. And we're going to be climbing down and experimenting in that place there. And if we can find some old coal equipment, from 1860, something that George would have touched himself, Mr. Hale. You never then know. Who knows? Hey? You never know. This is why I love it, guys. This is history on our doorstep. This is the black country. It's everywhere. Every bit of grass you drive past, every bit of trees that you go past in your car, whizzing around. Look to your left, look to your right, there's history. Everything has history and Coal an mines, Old factories, brickworks. This is when we ruled the world. This is empire. Folks, thanks for watching, man. Bert, you've been a great cameraman today. See you on the next one. See you soon. Keep watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. I <sighs> love this. See you soon. All the yonder's a park but just nearly begun. All bells in paradise, I heard them ring. Bits gold on the outside and silver within. Man, I love Swain. Jesus above everything Man did not park there stands a hole All bells in paradise I heard them ring Which is covered all over with the purple and pearl and I love sweet Jesus above everything. And in that hall there stands a bed.